litter is our greatest enemy. It doesn't really make sense using something one time and then turn it away. Every time you go to buy a food, you get a plastic fork, you get a spoon, you go to throw it away. Some people might turn up and say, well, there's rubbish. They don't like it. there's rubbish on the beach or somewhere, they will not come back. We can understand the reasons why, it's just education. I do my best. If I eat them, I just can't go on the paper. Everybody was saying there's a ban on plastic, but now there's a ban on single-use plastic, the things like straws and cups. This is an advisory, effective April 1st, 2019. Single-use plastics will be discontinued in an effort to protect our environment. Look a lot, them got plastic, yes, I were formed it. Everything that cup it is a plastic plate. We never do wear for look at blocking at the drain. Everybody, it's time to make a change. Petrol-based, single-use plastics affect our landscape in many ways. They clog drains and waterways, look unsightly, and impact our marine ecosystems negatively. So, with regards to the ban coming in effect from April 1st and the list of petrol-based, single-use plastic items, petrol-based means made from petroleum. So your regular cutlery, plastic forks, knives, spoons, plastic plates, anything that cannot be used again. So it cannot be recycled, it cannot be reused. That is single use. Here's where the plastic that we utilize every day ends up. Mangrove landfill. The single use plastics that are really a bugbear would be the water bottles, um, would be the plastic bags as well. What this does, it, especially if they're not biodegradable, if they're non-biodegradable plastics, it, it prevents the breakdown of waste. Because over years, this will break down eventually. But if there's plastics, it takes millions of years for plastics to break down. So you can imagine if garbage is in a plastic bag that is non-biodegradable, it will remain there. You may have breakdown within the bag, but the bag of itself is not allowing the microbes, it's not allowing the air and stuff to get in. It becomes somewhat anaerobic and sort of stagnant. So yes, single-use plastics are even bad for the landfill. All those plastic bags going nowhere. But what makes them so seemingly indestructible? There are seven different types of plastic, and uh, the particular one that we're focusing on is the, what everybody will be familiar with, is uh, polyester, right? Or the other technical term for it is PET. Um, it's a very durable plastic, it's flexible, it can handle lots of licks, so you will get it to make drink bottles and pet bottles and all these different things. That's where you get the word pet bottle from. Um, and it also can be milled down to very low microns, and that's where the, uh, the bags are made from. Um, but the density of it, it doesn't allow it to float like other plastics that we use in the industrial process, so it sinks. So when that plastic is put into the gutters, or somebody just throw it outside, it will go into the water stream, sink down and make its way into the ocean and sink to the bottom of the ocean because of the density of the plastic. Eastman Van Vell is the general manager of Superior Plastics here in Barbados. This is one of the many businesses which is transitioning from the production of high-density petroleum-based single-use plastics, which will be banned after January 2020 according to the Control of Disposable Plastics Act of 2019. This plant also produces low-density polyethylene plastics, which are exempt from the January 2020 ban. So this is what is known as a low-density polyethylene. Just for bread, you know, seasoning, for farmers used to put in their seasoning uh, products, and this we could continue manufacturing. That's, like I told you, that's about 35-40% of our business, which we could continue. But making bags like these, right? High density, I mean high density bags, can't after, Jan, after January. Despite their convenience, their impact on health and the environment has been devastating. So plastics are made from chemicals and toxins. One well-known one is called BPA or bisphenol A, and this chemical has potential impacts on our health through links to cancer, and it also impacts our nervous system. So that's one impact of plastic on our health. There are also huge impacts on the environment, on our soil, on our water, on the ocean. Due to these same chemicals, when they get into the water, into the soil, 
into the sea and potentially back into us. This is what is very alarming about plastics and why this ban has been welcomed by so many people. Yes, the ban is especially welcomed by the diving community, which has been one of the many organizations at the forefront advocating for the ban and cleaning our oceans. We love it. It's been so long. We wanted this to happen. I mean, nothing before it's time, but it was time for this. Um, we've seen too much plastic on our beaches. We've seen too much plastic on our reefs. We've seen too much pl plastic on the surface of the ocean. So uh, we, the diving community, welcomes this. What kinds of litter do you encounter most on your dives? Eighty percent of what we see on the ocean, um, on the beaches, is plastic. Plastic bags, plastic cups, um, plastic containers. Um, just by the nature of what it is, plastic, since it does not break down that easily, is, makes up most of what we remove from the ocean or the beaches. The new uh, ban on single-use plastics is hopefully going to have a significant impact on the coastline and marine environment in general because over the years, as part of our underwater coastal activities that we would normally do for the cleanups uh, in September for International Coastal Cleanup Day, we found a lot of plastics uh, being brought in as part and parcel of the cleanup event, right? So uh, what you're finding is that those plastics, depending upon their location, are normally from washdown, from drains and uh, road water courses, right? Culverts, drains, and generally the water courses and gullies that disperse onto the near shore environment. Um, that therefore reflects that you have an issue with continued illegal dumping. In other aspects, you have also litter on the road that is making its way into the drains and then out into the sea. In Bridgetown, there are no, there are no wells. There are only canals and, and open drains or box drains, and these lead to the central area where we have uh, the Princess Alice Pump House, and that deposits materials to the water to the sea. So if, for example, we have a situation where the garbage is built up tremendously uh, or significantly, then when it gets to the pump house, it causes all types of, of problems and difficulties along the way and also at the pump house location. Dr. Brewster introduced another aspect that contributes to the depositing of garbage in our oceans and marine parks. There have been some party cruisers in the past which have been using the single-use plastics, especially cups and straws, um, as part of their paraphernalia while on board. And uh, I guess especially at night it may be difficult to track, but people may be dropping such, such um, plastics over the side when they're going back for drinks, etc., and therefore that would pose a significant problem, right? The, the difficulty with plastics is that it isn't only the issue of biodegrading, but as has been seen more importantly globally now, is this whole concept of microplastics, whereby, as you know, plastics um, fragment. So when you have an old plastic bag, it starts to disintegrate into small pieces and smaller pieces till it gets almost like dust, okay? That's on land and that's in the air. In the ocean, the, the time for degradation of the plastics is um, a lot longer, but the impact is still the same. They break down into very, very small pieces, which can then actually be ingested by fish, other aquatic life, even some invertebrates, okay? So sea cucumbers and sea slugs and uh, sea urchins and those sort of things. So what you're finding is that because these are going down almost to the microscopic level in some instances, you can get a bio, uh, what you could call a bioaccumulation of plastics within fish and within other organisms that may be commercially exploitable. What is the impact of plastics on our ocean? As it relates to the marine environment, we all know that a lot of turtles mistake plastic bags for jellyfish and we find turtles dead on the beach sometimes with plastics in their stomach. Seabirds as well, marine mammals. Um, plastic is killing everything out there in the ocean. It's, there's, no good, um, th there's no good outcome to having more plastic in the ocean. With that said, I decided to take a look at the marine park in Carly Bay to see if single-use plastics could be found.
long single use cups, forks, knives, even plastic bags. But that's not much garbage for a marine park. But any plastic in the marine park is one piece too much. Plastics are an amazing material. They're everywhere and in everything. And that is the problem. So far, we've talked about high density polyethylene, AKA plastic bags. You must remember that they're made from a polymer called polyester. But there's one plastic that we use every day. It's called styrofoam. Styrofoam is a trademark like Pampers, you know, and therefore what you're what we're banning is poly polyesterine, which you kind of um, inject as a foam, and it expands within the mold, and that's where we get those what we call styrofoam is really polyurethane, and um, that also is banned. So those two plastics are the ones that we are primarily addressing. Now, folks might say, okay, you're banning plastic, so what about biodegradable PET or biodegradable polyester? There's no such thing as biodegradable PET or biodegradable um, polyester or degradable. What happens is it just simply breaks down into nanoparticles, so the plastic still finds its way into the environment and gets into all the organic life, the fish, the plants, everything it begins to impact on. So basically, what we're saying is, is that when it comes to degradable plastics that we need to transition away from that and work primarily with what we call biodegradable plastics. This is made from sugarcane bagasse. So this is a compostable alternative to styrofoam. So many distributors in Barbados are now selling these alternatives. There are about 10 distributors currently selling them. And if we look anywhere along the South Coast right now, I would say half of these restaurants are using the alternative. That's not PET with some resin or some additive in it to help it to break down. This is a completely organic based plastic that once it gets into the environment in a few days, it begins to dissolve. We've seen the damage they cause, how they are made, and why we as a country have moved away from these petroleum based products. Keep Barbados clean and say no to the single use plastics. When you warm up your food or reheat your food in a microwave in styrofoam, it leaches into your food, the bad chemicals. The plastic ban is really a very tiny part of a major campaign. Believe me when I say to you, for everything we ban, there is an alternative here in Barbados. We may have to change our culture slightly, but if we don't do it, who will? This is an advisory, effective April 1st, 2019. Single-use plastics will be discontinued in an effort to protect our environment. Look a lot, them got plastic, yeah, styrofoam, yeah. If it in the cup, it is a plastic plate. We never do rainfall, look at blocking at the drain. Everybody, it's time to make a change.